Here with me today, we're talking to Claire Ansel, who has been nominated as part of this year's Pomozi Inspirational Women's Award in the category of Role Model. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to be talking to you today, Claire. Oh, thank you. Um, I, when I read the write-up on you, and I'll just say a few things for our listeners, I just thought I'm so honoured to meet such a phenomenal person. The person that nominated you um, has said that you work with young people um, in the city for the past 20 years. Claire is passionate about giving young people the life chances they deserve. She will never write a young person off. Very often she has been the only adult who has shown any interest in a child and that child has gone on to flourish. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot more written and I'll refer to it as we um, talk about your inspiring work. And I know you probably think, wow, to be nominated in the category of role model, those are some big shoes, but you're doing some great stuff in the city. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> tell me about your work, because it says you've done this for 20 years. So, let's go back and then just tell me a little bit about how you started, what motivates you, just so our listeners can, um, can try and understand your journey. Yeah, okay. So, firstly, it's really odd to hear me being nominated for a role model and to hear those words back. I think... Um, you know, the role that I'm in to work for a charity called Motivate that supports young people, often who are facing difficulties or struggling in their life. But actually it's a team um, and I work with so many amazing people that for me it doesn't feel like a job. Um, you know, it's something I really believe in. I feel very privileged to be part of young people's lives. They give so much back to me. Um, and, and it's a joy. So I always see it as a joy. So to get a nomination from somebody to, to say that they think I'm doing a really good job, you know, I, it, it's very humbling and I, I never expected it, but it's lovely to hear those words. Um, I think for me, um, I grew up locally. Um, I went to a normal comprehensive school. In Portsmouth? Portsmouth. I was born in Portsmouth. Um, my parents weren't from Portsmouth, but I was born in Portsmouth. And, um, you know, when I was in school, my school days were quite tricky in that there was lots going on in my school. We used to have sort of police patrols. Um, it, it, it was quite a difficult time. Um, but I was paired with some other young people in my class, almost like a peer mentoring, um, who were struggling. And although I had sort of quite a humble uh, background, I always had lots of love in my family, loads of it. Um, and when I was working with these my peers, supporting my peers, I just realised how different their lives were to my own. Wow. Um, so, you know, I, I was working with a, um, a, a friend of mine who um, I would carry his books and take his books home in the evening because he said that if he went back and tried to do his homework, there was no space for him. He wasn't allowed to stay at home. His books would get lost or, you know, people would take the paper. So he asked me to look after his books for him. And that was the way I could help him um, so that when he came in, he wasn't getting a detention because he hadn't brought his books. And I actually still have his books. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> it kept on in my, in my little drawer under the bed. Um, so, but I've always loved people, always had a fascination with people. And um, when I left school, I went to college, I studied psychology and sociology, and that really gave me a flavour for thinking I want to do something with people. I'm not sure what it is, mm. but definitely something. Um, and then I ended up going to Portsmouth University because my mum um, knew somebody in the city council um, and I wanted a part-time job and um, they were doing sort of play and youth work. Um, so I put in an application and um, I was sent to Somerstown in the Brook Club. I was, I was quite young um, and they'd had to close down the year before because there'd been sort of riots with the young people, the behaviour had been terrible. Um, and so, you know, as a very young 19 year old, I was terrified at the thought that I was going into the middle of Somerstown where they'd had to close it down because they'd been throwing stones and rocks sure. at people. And I remember having a conversation with the guys at um, 
in Philippians and I said, do you really think I'm cut out for this? Can I do this? He said, you're going to be brilliant. You'll be fine. Just be you. Um, and I went there and I had the summer of my life. Wow. Um, I love those young people. They brought me so much joy and I see them occasionally around Portsmouth now. They're grown ups and, you know, see that they've got families of their own. Some are working with young people. Um, but it really opened my eyes to the disparities there are, um, even in a city like Portsmouth. You know, there were lots of parents that were struggling around mm. substance misuse, mm. um, involved in prostitution, um, but they had massive hearts and they would give what they could and they were struggling, lots of domestic abuse. Um, and obviously that has an impact on the children, Kids, yeah. but we were able to provide sort of a safe space for them. And I was just, young people are so incredibly resilient you know mm. i am always inspired by their stories you know some of the things they've had to face mm. um you know it's heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking but they come through and they've got such a great energy yeah um, and that for me is why i'm so committed to providing equality of opportunity now i was really fortunate to get that job because my mum knew someone that worked in the city council sure. that made me aware of that opportunity you know some of these young people don't have that chance yeah so that's you know for me something that i'm really passionate about and that's what we do within motivate it's about walking alongside young people you know there's no power in that relationship it's about i don't want to know what's wrong with you i want to know what's happened to you and what are your strengths and how can we help you pursue your passions and i think that's why the charity and the people that it attracts stay with us for a long time um because it was genuinely about walking alongside people and doing with and not for or to. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So 20 years, so your whole career you've been working with young people. Yeah. So I suppose from a, from a, how would I, how can I describe it? From a young age, you have this calling. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I've always felt a real, Kind of empathy with yeah. people and i can relate with that i went to an all girls school and when i was in high school i all i was always drawn to speaking to other young girls and trying to help them solve their issues so i all, i always had this enlightenment i don't know where it came from mm -hmm. i had a really fortunate background and some of the girls lived in areas that were quite rough and I didn't believe in myself at the time, but I always felt really confident to engage with with, with, um, with women and empower them. And I was a prefect and I was good at um, public speaking. And it was only years later that now I'm, I'm, I'm in that position of helping women and I love it. So I, I do believe that sometimes life gives us these markers, these hints. Absolutely. And um, it's fantastic that you stayed with that calling, you know, because there's this quote that says, if you do something uh, you love, then you, it doesn't become a chore. That's it. And that, that's how I job. feel about, exactly. you know, getting this nomination. So, but I'm doing something that I love every yes. day. And, you know, it's a, it's a two way process because I've learned so much from the communities yeah. that I've worked in. Um, and and from the young people that actually they've enriched my life yeah. um and and i hope i've been able to support and guide them i think uh, it really rings true to me you know sometimes people say oh i don't know whether i can work with young people i might not have the training or the skills and i always say to people actually the training the skills you know we can develop but it's actually that bit, a young person will absolutely know if you don't like them. Yes. And so you always have to find something that's likable, even mm. when at times their behaviours are really challenging yeah. because of the past trauma that they've had. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe that for me has been something that I've always been able to see past, Yes. is that I can um, you know, put myself in their shoes and see that actually you know, people aren't born bad. I, I don't believe that. No, they're not. Um, I think people are shaped by their experiences. Yes. And actually, once you see the rationale behind their behaviour, yes. there's always hope in a way that you can, 
you know, support them into changing that and channeling that in a really positive way. Mm-hmm. But you've got to believe in those people, you've got to invest in them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, it is a calling, I guess. I feel um, so. And I feel really privileged to have been part of that. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And how important, I know it sounds, maybe it's a silly question, but I, I think it's a relevant question. How important are youth services for the city? Because I've I've seen or I've heard on the news that a lot of funding cuts um, over the last few years, and where do the youth go? And you know, because you're such an expert at working with young people, how important is it? I think it's 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 hugely important. You know, we've really seen the impact of sort of the government cutbacks in terms of you know decimating youth services. Um, but I think even more so coming out of the pandemic. So we're seeing this huge surge in terms of young people's mental health. Yes. Um, and it, it's not surprising, you know, I think adolescence is a really difficult time anyway. If we all look back to when we were young people, regardless of our situation growing up, you know, it can be a time of great discovery, but it can also be very turbulent and disorientating. You've got all those physical changes, emotional changes, mm. um, and also you're trying to find your freedoms. And so inevitably there's always tensions within families um, because you know people struggle sometimes to yes. find that line. You're taking some risks, but you know you don't want to take too many risks that put you in an unsafe position. And you're thinking about the company you keep, about yes. your educational decisions. And I don't know about you, but when I was a young person, um, everything felt very immediate yes. so you know I couldn't see into the future you know it was just really important about what I was going to wear at the disco at the end of the week you know yes. that's the most important thing in my mind or that you know I had a group of friends that were going to meet me outside the park to go in yeah. <laughs> and and I think that's true for for young people they're very immediate so whilst you know when the pandemic came most of us could draw on our old resources and know actually yes this is unprecedented you know but we've been in difficult times mm, before yeah. and actually we can see after a period our lives will resume hopefully and you know things will be okay but for young people they've lost so many milestones you know peers are really really important to them you know in this country they're one of the biggest influences of their behavior and so to be segregated, to, uh, you know, have bubbles where, you know, you're not in a bubble with your natural peer group, to feel that guilt and pressure around actually, what if I catch COVID and give it to my elderly grandparents, yeah, yeah. You know, missing your prom, not getting your GCSEs when you've been in school and that's all you've been working towards is like actually doing your GCSEs, you know, these rites of passage have just been taken away from them. Yes, yes. And young people describe to me a feeling of like that they're feeling hopeless. Yeah. Um, and then uncertain about the future. And you know, if you couple that actually a lot of young people have got things that happened to them in their childhood, for mm-hmm. example, they've witnessed abuse or neglect, or um, they're living with a parent with poor mental health, or there's been domestic violence, which we know there was a rise of during Absolutely. the pandemic. Yeah. So actually, so you've got adolescence a tricky time, chuck in COVID, chuck in anyone that had any sort of adverse childhood experiences. It's absolutely no wonder we're seeing this boom. And I think the role that youth services have to play is providing a really safe space. The, you know, the youth worker, young person relationship is very different to any other relationships you know and that's not to undervalue you know a great teacher yes. or a wonderful parent or yeah. someone within the community but you know it is a profession where we get alongside those young people and we can have those discussions yes. you know there's lots going on in the world that's quite confusing and actually young people need a space to articulate that we need to change hearts and minds yes. you know um so you know Earlier on, you know, we were talking about gender inequality and about pronouns. And actually, sometimes young people need to explore that and understand yes, what's yes. behind that. I'm hearing this, but I'm not sure why. Well, it is, exactly. and, and it's through that edu- informal education um, that you can do that. But also, if you think about what keeps us well, you know, it is simple things about connecting, being part of something, yes. giving back, feeling you have a voice. Yes. Um, And they're all things that we underpin within youth services and youth provision, um, which is why I just think they're hugely important for young people. (laughs) 
is so passionate. I love it. Here, they um, one of the um, one of the statements that were submitted in your uh, to to the Portsmouth Inspiration Awards is that during lockdown, you went above and beyond to keep people safe and quickly adapted to ensure they could still keep young people safe. Claire delivered care packages and made sure they always had someone to talk to when things got too difficult. Explain that to me. Mm. Care packages are these two young people? Yes, yeah, so you know, I, I can't take the you know, I led the organization through that period, but actually it was my staff that were out there delivering those mm -hmm. care packages. Um, and that's why I think sometimes they don't get the credit. Sure. You know, I wish I could nominate everyone in my organization. Um, but basically, we, I, I took a decision that, um, along with uh, some great managers that we have, that we felt that face-to-face -face contact was really important during this period. Um, lots of organisations have had to go virtual, but for the young people we were working with, they just didn't know where to turn to. So yes. we started delivering sort of street-based work. Um, and you know, I took part in the street-based work because I wanted to understand what was happening for young people. And you know, on the day that I went out, um, we met a young person that was homeless. Um, but I also met an adult who had just come back into the country, um, but couldn't get hold in terms of anyone from the job centre and accessing his benefits. So he'd lived on a, a, a bench. Um, and the reason he'd left the country was because he'd gone to visit his mother in France. Um, but then there were issues around his legal status within this country, which was preventing him from accessing benefits. benefits yeah. um, but also we met a young person who had gone for a walk because she's a young carer. Um, then we met other young people where there were arguments happening in their family. I met two young women who were in a relationship who didn't know how to tell their parents they were in a relationship mm. and that they were breaking the rules and seeing each other and kissing. And so, you know, I think that for me cemented, we will do whatever it takes to maintain face-to-face -face contact with young people within the guidelines of what we could do. So we made modifications to our buildings to make them more sort of COVID compliant. We um, delivered care packages, um, we did street-based work, we were doing walk and talks with young people um, and you know everyone got behind it um, and they worked so incredibly hard. I was so proud of them. Um, but we Sounds like a fantastic it. team. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> I love it. And I think, so I've been there 15 years. Wow. And I never intended to stay that long. Really? But they are just wonderful humans. And I really believe in a cause, so it's been very difficult to leave. And I've got no intention of leaving any time <laughs> no, soon. No, don't leave. <laughs> don't leave. Um, so I just want to bring it back to yourself. Um, yeah, you're such a fantastic person. Everything you've described, and there's so much more that's been written about you. But I just want to shine a spotlight on you. And sometimes that's really difficult. I've had that before. Mm -hmm. um, so I did receive a, a Portsmouth Inspiration Award in 2019 for community activism. And I struggle with proper imposter syndrome. I thought they've made a mistake. Um, like, who would actually... I mean, I know people... Have, have to ask your permission to nominate yeah. you. But I thought, what are they going to write? I know. <laughs> and um, I think one thing I learned from that is it's okay to give yourself credit and say, you know, I've done really well. And I, I just want to say that to yourself Thank and to you. our listeners. And I think if it's not a lie, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not an advocate for lying to yourself or to others but if you've done it and you've ticked a box and you're still doing it i think we should be kind enough to say oh, you know i really did that <laughs> yeah. I sometimes when you, if, without even thinking about it you may actually doubt yourself and say i could never do that like you said it yourself when you stepped through the doors in summertime when you were 19 years old you said i can't do it so you have to give yourself credit like 20 years later and say, you know what, 
have done amazingly well. Yeah. yeah. So isn't it funny because, you know, I, every day I'm trying to get people to recognise their strengths and articulate that. Um, and actually, but when it comes to yourself, it's really difficult it's to really do it. It's really difficult, yeah. I think the one thing I can say is I really care about people. Yeah. Really, really care. Yeah. And, and I think maybe that's what comes through is that you know I'm not in it for any personal gain you know yes. I never wanted anyone to shine a spotlight on me yes. Yes. Um, but what I I do really want is for people to recognize how important young people are yes. and I think maybe through being authentic and yes. really caring um, and having empathy with people maybe that shines through with my team yeah. um, and they can get on board because they know that it's it's about a really good cause and what do you do for yourself to, mm. to, to, or acts of kindness? Do you, do you do any acts of kindness? So I've been really working on this Good. this year. Um, I think, you know, I, I shared earlier that I've had some personal issues. My husband um, had cancer um, during the lockdown. It was completely out of the blue. I've got a very small child. It was a really difficult time. And I think, you know, I've done quite a bit of work on myself because I've recognised that whilst I am a very optimistic person, I always, we, we talk about this a lot at work, I always imagine that I've got a bag of fairy dust mm -hmm. on my back and there are things that I can do for myself, people that I can surround myself with that absolutely fill that fairy dust up and make me feel good and make me feel like I can manage anything, all of the difficulties, but there are also things that deplete that fairy dust mm. and if it gets too low then I've got no resources from which to pull upon so I've really worked this year on doing things that keep me well so that is I've got a great group of friends Good. and making sure that I spend time mm. with them um, I really love doing things with my family and going outside into nature um, I love horse riding it's really expensive so I can't do it very often mm -hmm. but but when I can I'll treat myself to going horse riding well done. Um, and and also just taking a bit of time out I think the biggest learning curve for me this year has been that it's not selfish to put your own needs first and that analogy of you need to put your oxygen mask on first when you're in an airplane crash yes, before yes. you can help anybody else really resonates with me and yeah. so um, you know a wise woman this year said that to me Claire you've got to protect your energy and um, you need to make sure that you put your oxygen mask on first so that you can continue giving to others yes um, that's so important so important so <laughs> important it's something I sometimes forget to do yeah but like yourself I've said to myself this year I have to have to have to have to Put my oxygen mask on i yes. have to do it and actually earlier on i was um speaking with friends of mine and we were we, we were talking about this busy lifestyle we have and um mm -hmm. i said you know i'm learning to delegate more yeah and it's not that i feel i need to control everything mm -hmm. and that's why i don't delegate I discovered the reason why I don't delegate and I'm always going, 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 going is because I struggle to ask for help. Yeah. You know, not that you think your team or your family members can't help, but always being in this role of saying, I can do it, I can take it, yes. I can do it, I can take it, when actually it's okay to say, I need help. Absolutely. And when your energy is, when you're working in that way, then you default into those bad things around yes. saying, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, yes. this is why. Yes. And so it's sort of a self-perpetuating cycle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I've really realised that actually being really busy doesn't mean that I'm doing anything more productive. Exactly, yeah. And in fact, I need space to think. Yes. So when, when I'm calmer, when you know I'm not running around, like a headless chicken and I'm losing my keys everywhere because I'm just not thinking because I've got a hundred things going on. Um, it's actually not that productive. Yes. So I need to, you know, take some space to give myself a chance to think about things and then I can make better choices and better yes. decisions. I think as I've got older, I've definitely, you know, realised that, that it's Good. okay to say, do you know what, I've done a lot this week. I'm just going to go for a walk for an hour Fantastic. and take a break. <laughs> so if you have to go to dinner, 
Yeah. Would, and select any three people. Who would you want to dine with? My first one is Tina Turner. Oh my goodness, I love <laughs> Tina Turner. I love Tina Turner. Um, so have you, have you, um, do you know about her story? Have you watched the yes. movie Tina and Ike? Oh yes. my goodness. I have. And, um, and that moment she walks out when she says, I've got, that's it. I know. I've had enough such a powerful moment it is i think one of the things about being kind to myself is oh, i love dancing like really? dancing around like a yeah just you know just the music dancing around i think i really missed that during the pandemic mm. and one of my first outings was to a karaoke bar where there was a disco going was on. outings after lockdown yeah right? <laughs> and they said claire do your tina because i love doing this <laughs> tina turner impression really? and i've just got this image of me singing simply the best in this packed pub and if i felt like i was tina in that wow. moment yeah Fantastic. it was brilliant so definitely tina turner um then the second i think is grace o'malley so um i read this book to my six-year-old daughter it's called good night stories for rebel girls and it's about real life and amazing women throughout history so grace was an irish pirate back in the 1600s wow. um, but i love the story because her two sons get captured by queen elizabeth the mm first -hmm. and she goes across sails across as this pirate to negotiate with elizabeth the first the release of her two sons yeah and you know, in true woman fashion, she clinches it and actually forms a friendship with Queen Elizabeth the wow. I. And um, yeah, so you know, maybe if there are more women in power, there'd be less wars. Absolutely. <laughs> and then the third is David Attenborough. Oh because yes, I just um, yeah, love him. I love David Attenborough. <laughs> and um, you know, I grew up watching his programs and you know, just could listen to him mm, for for ages. He's phenomenal. Yeah. So they're my three. <laughs> Fantastic. And what's your favourite food? Oh, I, that's a tricky one. I think it's got to be a lasagna. A lasagna. You can't be a lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> you like cooking? I am not the best cook. My husband's a really good cook, um, but I can make a mean lasagna. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> With extra amazing. cheese. Yeah, got to have extra cheese. <laughs> But it's been lovely chatting with you. Oh, you too. We could have continued talking we for can. another hour. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I completely forgot I was on a podcast. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you for and me. thank you for all the work that you do. Um, you are a phenomenal, phenomenal person, and keep doing it. There's so many young people out there. I know of young people that are in need of youth services. And you're shining, you're shining beacon to these young people. It's so, so needed in a world where there's so much going on, social media. And I just want to say to you, don't doubt yourself. Keep running. And as you run, pick with you every single child because the city needs more players. <laughs> and, and, and your team as well, if your team are listening today we know that you know behind every great woman is a great team and behind that great team is a great leader so i just want to say on behalf of everyone thank you for all the work you're doing in the city thank you for having me thank you <laughs>